Welcome to church, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, welcome to church, y'all. Go ahead and tell them that, yeah. Come on, I love being at church. I love it. There's a few things uh, before I jump into the word. I, I, I really personally like jumping right into the word after worship. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, we worship the Lord and we encourage and edify one another through the word. And, and I like to keep that together. But there is so much going on in our church. As you can tell, this isn't a paint design. We didn't think under construction was a good look. But look around. We're under construction right now because we've been having a lot of growth. Isn't that good news? Anyone in here believe that's some good news? Yeah. And... Uh, and while we're under construction, we've been running a bunch of crazy events. And one of them is uh, this Wednesday, we're having a baby shower for 100 moms in the city of Atlanta. Yeah, it's super exciting. And so after church, I know there's a group of you guys who are hanging out to set that up. And if you got nothing to do after church and you like to skip lunch, hang out with us a little bit. I'd love for you to do that. But uh, there's something I want to point out uh, before, because I'm going to bring my dad up here. How many guys love Pastor Paul Palmer? Anyone in here? I do too. I love him. You know, I, I grew up hearing that you should never trust a bald guy. And my dad just proved that you could trust him. Uh, but before I get in that, uh, the renovation, uh, actually, I got a message from uh, a church member, Donald. And he, he said, man, I just felt like the Lord said, Tom, you should ask again about renovation funds, which I thought was so sweet. Uh, and so we raised, I don't know if you guys know this, we had a $50,000. We raised that $50,000. It was incredible at a dinner. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's great. And my friend Donald, who has a great group, he teaches on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He says, man, I just felt like the Lord said, you guys should shoot for $60,000. I said, okay, yeah, sure. And uh, why not? We'll spend some more money renovating. And, and uh, he actually mentioned something, though, and I thought it was so true. He said, there's so many people who wanted to participate who weren't at that dinner who might want to participate and that we should open up to you guys. And I'm going to tell you right now, whatever goes in that fund is going to go right into this building. That's what we're going to do with it. And so if you're thinking, man, I want to give to that. I want to be a part of that. I want to be part of the extra. You know, there's some things that, uh, I mean, how many guys have ever done construction ever? Have you guys ever done construction ever? Yeah, things always get a little bit more pricey as you go. So I'm sure we'll spend it all. So if you want to give, you go on Church Center app. There's a giving option there uh, to give to the renovation fund. And Johnny will remind you of that. And I got two more things I want to hit on. It's one is... Uh, how many guys like bread? Anyone in here like bread? Yeah? Yeah? I'm not going to chuck this. This thing is heavy. But I got four loaves of bread that my little sister Maddie made. And I, I want to point something out really quick, okay? Now, this isn't just because it's my sister Maddie, okay? Even though it kind of is because it's the best bread I've ever had, all right? But look around. Look around this room. Look around. Look at everybody, all right? There's so many talents in this room. Look at everybody. There's people in here who are great at decorating. There's people in here who are artists. Where are my artists at? Where are you guys at? My weird birds. What's up, my weird birds? I love artists. You guys are wild, right? We got some hard work. Who, where are my construction people at? Who can fix a wall? Where my, yeah, look at this. Look, there's all these things. And now this is what I know in the church. My sister Maddie, she, she's a killer mom. She's a killer wife. But one of my favorite things she does is she makes delicious sourdough bread. All right. This is like some killer stuff. And I've got four loaves. I want to give it away. And what I want to encourage is that as a church, we start recognizing the gifts that are in this room. And that we start saying, hey, you know what? I know someone who makes some killer bread. Let me, let me go to her instead of going, how many of you guys would like to get some killer bread? Not from Kroger, but from Maddie. Anyone in here? So I got four loaves. Who can I give these to really quick? This is a, I don't want to throw it to you. You want me to throw it to you? Ah, right, here we go. Hey, okay. And who else? What do you want? Right here, right here. Over, anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, look at that. David, right there. Thank you, David. Boom. Oh, almost killed someone. Yeah. Yeah, take it to the newcomer. Oh, my gosh. It's still warm. <laughs> oh, oh. It's still warm. <laughs> hey, Macy. Here you go. I want you to take this right here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, all right, so check this out. Check this out. You never thought in a million years that you'd go to church and you had bread thrown at you, did you? That was tight. Maddie, that's your bag. Sorry. <laughs> hey, so check this out. What we're going to do now, I'm going to make this clear. Um, I'm not going to do this every week that we're going to have Maddie make bread. I'm not going to make her a laborer and start up her own st store here. But how many of you guys would like once a month that there's an option that you could purchase some bread from her? And so you could bless her for all the great work. How many of you guys would love that? And how many of you guys in his house know that you probably make bread too and you could bring it and other things? Wouldn't that be sick? I would love to start seeing more of that. Now, listen, I don't have a plan for that. I just know in my heart, I'm going, look around this place. There is people with talents. And as believers, don't you know that we should come together, one another. And let's be real, not try to get the best deal from one another, but we should bless one another and their stuff, right? Hire them at full price. Pay for the bread. You know what I'm saying? Like really bless them. 
and not just try to get good deals. Amen? Anyone else in here on that? Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, dang, I was hoping for a good deal. <laughs> now, I got one more thing we want to talk about because May is going to be a crazy month. All right? May is going to be a crazy month. So I need my dad, Pastor Paul, to come up here really quick. Come here, my dad. My favorite dad in the whole wide world. I'm going to make this quick because we all want to hear Tommy's message this morning, right? Amen. Hey, on the 25th of May, my birthday, by the way, and Tom and I will be homeless at that week. Uh, we're doing one of the biggest events the church has ever done. We're going to have about a thousand visitors meeting us in the park, maybe a little bit more than a thousand visitors for a history lesson for our children. But more than that, to honor our men and women that have served in our military. It's Memorial Day weekend and we're doing the tomb of the unknown soldier. We have quite a few people that volunteer, but we could use a few more. But what I want you to do today, there's flyers back at the coffee shop. If you have a veteran in your home or somebody that's patriotic that you know, we want you to invite them to meet us in the park on May 25th. It's going to be crazy. We're going to have the military out there. They're going to be doing a 21-gun volley, posting the flags, it's, and the acting. It, you better bring a hanky because you're going to tear up as well. Tom, thank you for the time. May 25th, make sure you get a flyer. Come on. Hey, hey, let's stick. Yeah, you guys heard us talk about that a good bit. Dad, that was so, hey, you didn't need to go that fast, man. You really blew through that, man. That was awesome. And it's a church event. Yeah, it's a church event. Hey, listen, uh, we've been talking about this for a while. How many of you guys know that there's men and women who serve our country who uh, need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ too? Anyone in this place? Yeah. And I want you to know something. There's a crazy skit. My dad is telling people, he's calling up the National Guard. And he'll be telling, and they just start sobbing while he's telling them what the skit's going to be like. Saying, we got to be there. We got to be a part of that. And then afterwards, we're going to share a story about a different tomb, an empty one, one about Jesus. And we're believing that God's going to do something wonderful down that park. So May 25th, I want you to do two things. I want you to volunteer. Also pray that there'd be no rain. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I want you to look to your neighbor. Say, what up? Come on, say a little cooler than that. Some of y'all from the suburbs, I just heard it. What is up? <laughs> I, want to, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to talk to you. Go ahead and tell him. And then you go point at me and say, it's his fault. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say, it's his fault. There you go. Now, I say this every week. I'm going to keep saying it every week. Uh, you can get a sermon anywhere. You can get great worship on your cell phone. But church is about the gathering. And I want to encourage even those who are online today, I want to encourage you. You should make church. Actually, where are my men? Where are you at, men? Men, where are you at? Now, come on. Men, be tougher than that. Yo, men, where are you at? <laughs> where are you at, men? Yeah. Okay, a few of us. I want to say this to the men, especially, and the women, too. You need to make church a priority in your life that you say, I'm not going to forsake the fellowship of the brethren. And I want to say that in a strong way to everyone in this house because you are not meant to walk out your faith alone. How many of you guys know that's true? That God saw Adam alone in the garden and said, man, that is not good. I don't want that. Gave him even said, make more people. That's really what he said. He said, multiply. And then, and then it's like, no, we, he wants us to gather together. And I want to just make it clear to everybody, you need to make it a purpose. If it's not Sunday, make it Wednesday. If it's not Wednesday, get a part of a Bible study. Be a part of a group. How many guys love groups in this house? Anyone in here love groups? Get involved in a group. I'm saying this not because uh, it's going to do something to me. It does something to you. And so I want to encourage you. It does do something to me too because I love you like crazy. But church is about the gathering of the brethren together to worship the king of kings. So look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Go ahead and tell them that. I'm glad you're here. Come on, we're here together. So this is what we're going to be talking about. I'm on a series and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be talking about two things on this series. Now, how many guys would like to hear God's voice? Anyone in here? How many guys would like, to, oh, come on. How many guys are going, I want to hear God's voice even more. Anyone in here want to hear it even more? Come on. We're going to be talking about how to hear God's voice. Isn't that great news? Yeah. And so we're going to be teaching on this and it's a two week series, but Today, we're going to start with not how, but we're going to start with the most important thing that comes to hearing God's voice, which is first wanting to hear God's voice. Now, this is a big one. So if you are in this house and you want to hear God's voice, you raise your hand. You go, I want to hear God's voice. That's a lot of us. All right, good. Now, if you're in this house and you're going, but I don't want to hear him all the time. How many guys have ever felt that way before? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about breaking down some walls. And we're going to talk about how to get to a place where you actually want to hear God's voice. Now, I want to clear up something, though, first is uh, sometimes I, I look around the world 
how many of you guys like to travel? Where are my travel bugs at? Man, you guys, you guys got it good. That's like the whole church. No wonder you guys are here all the time. You guys are out in Venezuela or something. Not Venezuela. That's a terrible place to go right now. But, you know, you're somewhere. And check this out, man. Uh, uh, traveling, you look at the world. And, I mean, isn't it insane, the world? Like, you look around and you're like, man. I was thinking about Venezuela because the Angel Falls, you know, that giant cliff that just has water pouring off of it. And you, you have all these amazing places. And sometimes I think about the voice of God and because I see all God's glory in the earth, I imagine that the voice of God is kind of like the movies. You know, it's like big, booming Morgan Freeman, you know, I am here with you today voice. You know what I'm talking about? But that's not what we mean when we say hearing the voice of the Lord. How many of you guys are married? Anyone in here married? How many of you guys have ever experienced the voice of your spouse when they said nothing? You guys know what I'm talking about? The silent treatment? Because when we say voice, the hands are going up a little hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not right now. I'm in it right now, actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, when we say voice, I'm not talking about the audible voice in your ears. I'm talking about hearing God communicates. I'm using hearing loosely. I, I'm talking about, I, I don't really care what way or what instrument he uses to communicate to you, but I want God to communicate to me. And so when I hear people say, man, I just want to hear God's voice, I know that though they really mean, though they might want to hear with their ears, what they're really saying is, I want God to communicate to me. Man, it could be a sign. How many of you guys would like to see a sign? Anyone in here? Wouldn't that be tight? Yeah. It would be, dude, could you imagine if I just started flying right now? Wouldn't that be sick? I would love that. Or we all started flying. That would be sick too. I would love a cool sign. Some of us, some of us just need something to be like reaffirmed. And so when I talk about hearing God's voice, what I want to say to you is I'm actually not talking about how to get to the place that the Lord speaks to you through your eardrum. I'm talking about getting to the place where you want to know what he wants from you. Getting to a place where you're saying, God, what is it that you want to communicate to me? May it be through your word. May it be audible. May it be God. How many of you guys know he's the creator of everything? How many of you guys know that? And isn't it silly that we try to limit him just to the audible voice of the Lord? Uh, he's the one who knows your insides and outsides. He knows every part of your brain. Isn't that crazy? And he said, I could speak to you in a million different ways. And he does. And he wants to speak to you in a million different ways. And so we're talking about the instrument of his communication, his voice. But when I say I want to hear from God, what I'm saying is we want to be communicated to. And we know this. We know that communication is more than a voice. It could be a tone. It could be silence, like I said earlier. Heck, it could be sign language. Who, who knows American sign language in this house? Anyone in here? Wow, a few of you? Wow, that's pretty sick, dude. Thank you for responding. I learned that from Blue's Clues, man. Thank you. That was great, yeah. I really did. Thank you. That's thank you, correct? Yeah, okay, all right, all right. I learned some other things from a deaf friend in high school I'll never show anybody. I really did. I'm not teaching you nothing. Get out of here with that. I'm not teaching you guys nothing. Uh, in order to hear the voice of the Lord in your life, in order to hear the Spirit, you first, though, have to want to hear it. And that seems obvious. I think most of us would say we want to hear it, but I'm going more than just wanting to hear God's voice for the show of it. He, he's not a performing act for us to hear. And most of us want to hear God in that sense. It'd be really nice to hear the Lord, and that would just do something for me. But today, in order to make something that in order to get through this series about how to hear God's voice, we've got to start with your desire to hear his voice. And so in order to have a desire to hear the Lord's voice, the number one thing that you have to do, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The number one thing you have to do if you want to hear the Lord's voice is to trust. Everyone say trust. Come on, that was weak. Everyone say trust again. And there you go. Who did that again? I love that. Good job. I thought you so. I was setting you up for that. Thank you. Man, have you guys ever, uh, uh, I want to say this before I go down the trust thing. I want you to know the Lord speaks a lot. He is speaking all the time. The Spirit is leading all the time. He is communicating all the time. And most of our problem is not God's not speaking to us. Most of our problem is that we don't hear Him. And, and when I talk about trust, I, I want to tell you this story about a guy who spoke to me, but I didn't hear a word he said. Uh, me and my wife were engaged, and uh, we got into a car fight. Have you guys ever been in a car fight? Yeah, the car fights are great. Uh, they're dangerous. You know? And uh, we got in a car fight, and I don't know where we were driving to, but we were way out of the city. We drove about 20 minutes, and she pulled off the exit. I think we are going to go see a movie, uh, if I remember right. And we were fighting about something. I don't know what it was about. And uh, was, whatever it was, it was, I didn't want to do something that she wanted to do. I guarantee you that was the fight. 
And we got there and we stopped at the red light and I was being a little dramatic and I got out of the car, I slammed the door and I walked off. Now, in my head, I thought, she will come and get me. <laughs> that girl whipped the car around and took off. She really did. And, and so she took off and I was stranded. I don't know where I was. And the side of the road, you know, we just got the freeway on the, on the on-ramp or the exit ramp. I'm just standing there. I'm thinking, oh, shoot, what am I going to do? My plan didn't work. And so I walked and I sat there. I thought, surely she's going to come back. And uh, she didn't. 45 minutes went by and I was just chilling. And so, and so what I did, this is a true story. Uh, this is the last time I got out of the car, I think, actually. Is that, yeah, I think it was the last time I got out of the car. She won that fight. And so... I was too embarrassed to make any phone calls to people, you know. I don't want to call them like, hey, will you come pick me up, uh, you know. And so I hitchhiked. I hitchhiked. Have you guys ever hitchhiked before? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a fun thing to do if you haven't done it. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it, I guess, but it's kind of fun if you're up for the risk. And so I, I started walking down onto the freeway and started hitchhiking, and this guy in a Mercedes coupe was pulled over, and he was doing something. So I ran up on him, which was scary for him, I'm sure. And uh, I did. I just... Zero idea of what I was doing. I like, hey man, and grabbed him. I was like, hey dude, what, you know, kind of backed up. I don't have any money. I'm like, no, 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 I need a ride. And uh, and I was like, can you? Uh, where are you going? I need to get down to the city. He's like, uh, okay, I guess. So I jump in the car with him. He's like, man, why are you hitchhiking? So I tell him. Now I don't know this guy from Adam. I don't trust this guy with a lick. All right, I don't know. I don't. Give, I'm not going to take any of his advice. I'm still steaming that Susie left me. That's all I'm thinking about. And I'm thinking in my head. Those are, I'm going to have to get her back somehow. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to get her back somehow. I don't, know, I don't know, steal her credit card and not tell her where it's at. No, I'm just going to never do that. Actually, probably should have. She had way more money than I did back then, so I probably should have, but whatever. And we're driving, so I tell him, my fiance, you know, I got out of the car and she left me out here on the streets. And he starts telling me all this advice. Have you guys ever got unsolicited advice before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you don't trust the person, what happens? That advice goes through one ear and out the other. And he was telling me something. I don't know. He was talking the whole time after I told him. All I really remember is at the very end, before I got out of the car, he just said, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's all he said to me at the end. <laughs> Thanks, man. So I got up on North Avenue and I walked three miles to get back to my, where I lived. And I sat there and I remember thinking, that guy said so much to me and I couldn't hear a word. And I know why. Because I couldn't trust that guy worth a lick. Now, pause. I want to tell you another story. This is going to make my wife look crazy a little bit, but hang in there. Okay, she's not crazy. I am known for being late. And so me and her, uh, she needed a ride to this thing, a job interview. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take you. I promise you, I'll be on time. And I took off uh, 10 minutes before I was supposed to take her. And I drove a homeless guy around for a little bit. And I came back, all right? That's literally what I did. And I came back and I got back uh, one minute early, but that wasn't the point. How many of you guys know most fights are about the principle, not what happened? You guys know what I'm talking about? And she was ticked off at me, and she was mad, and she got in the car, and, and the guy who I was giving a ride, his name was Car Wash, I was guy, he opened the door for her, he said, my lady, because that's how he talked to my lady, and she said no, she jumped in the back seat, slammed the door, you know, and even Car Wash, he looked at me, he's like, good luck, buddy, I said, thanks, Car Wash, and we're driving, and she's ripping me a new one, and truthfully, rightfully so, and we get out there, and she gets out of the car, and she looks at me, she's pointing at me, she's mean mugging me when she gets out of the car, right, she's ticked. So I come home back to the house. My mom's there. I, I walk in and I said, I think, I think I'm going to marry a crazy. I think she's crazy. That's what, I told my, that's, what I, that's what I told my mom. And this is what my mom did. She laughed. Now, that's not what I want to hear from my mom. I want to say, son, you're right, my poor baby. And, you know, called on me. She said, uh, all women are. And she laughed. <laughs> and I remember hearing my mom say that. And something just shifted inside of me. Like, oh, I guess I do love her still. You know, I don't know what happened. And I tell you that weird story, or those two stories together, because there was a difference in each of the stories. Some guy I didn't know, I didn't trust with a lick. He might have been giving me killer advice. I have no idea. I didn't care. Because you don't listen to people you don't trust. You don't listen to people you don't trust. That's, that's just how it is. It doesn't matter how good it is. It doesn't matter how great it is that they're telling you. If you don't trust them, you don't listen to them. But when you trust them, everything they say matters to you. Can I tell you something about the voice of the Lord? I want you to have, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open it up to 1 Kings, all right? 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to read you something. But there's this guy, Elijah, who seriously trusted the Lord more than he even saw in his circumstances. He said, God, I trust your ways. I trust you. 
In other words, I can lean on you. When you speak to me, no matter what you say to me, I can bet my bottom dollar on it. It's going to be good. I trust you. And as I just trust you with my emotions, I trust you with my life. I want to say this about God's voice in your life. The place that you trust him the most is where you'll hear him the most. The place that you do not trust him, you will not, you will not care what he says to you. It's true. First Kings chapter 19, the backstory is Elijah just killed a bunch of prophets of Baal. Right? He's, he just killed all these false prophets. He just killed a bunch of them. And then Jezebel, the queen, uh, 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 Ahab's wife, said, you know what? I'm going to kill him. Let's kill this Elijah. So his circumstances, rightfully so, are scary. And it says Elijah runs away in, in chapter 19. He runs away and he goes and falls down and he cries. He says, you know, why is this so hard in life, right? And then he, he's sitting there and the Lord feeds him and the Lord speaks to him. And he does this thing. The Lord, actually, it's a great story. If you haven't read 1 Kings 19, I want you to read it. It's a great way to see how the Lord speaks to people. But verse 14, Elijah says to God, because God had asked him in the verse before, Elijah, what are you doing out here? And Elijah says, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. How many of you guys have ever been in a bad circumstance? Anyone in here? Anyone in here been in a bad circumstance? How many of you guys have been in a place where, you know, someone says, why don't you go back to that situation? And you're going, absolutely not going back to that situation. I, I, I've seen that. I, I, I've heard people say that. I, I've heard abusive relationships. And people say, well, go home tonight. And it's like, I can't go home tonight. They're going to beat me. I, I'm not going to trust that. My circumstances are way, way more trustworthy than what you're giving me advice on. I trust that if I go back, I'm going to get hurt. I trust that in my own judgment that this isn't going to work out. But Elijah is a man that trusts the Lord. And we see that all through his stories. And this is what the Lord says to him. The Lord says, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you derive, anoint Hazel, the king of Assyria. And the story goes on. And this is what he tells Elijah. Go back. Now, how many of you guys have ever been in a tough time? And God tells you, hey, go back to the tough time. Right after you got out of it. Have you ever had that before? That's crazy talk. You know what I love about Elijah. He was able to hear the Lord in circumstances that he didn't agree with. Oh, I don't like this idea. But because I trust you, God, I will give you my ears. Because I know your ways are better than mine, I'm going to give you my ears. Listen, you will never want to hear from the Lord as long as you don't trust him. Actually, let me rephrase that. You'll never want to hear from the Lord as long as you trust yourself more than you trust him. You can I say it again? As long as you're trusting your ways more than you trust his ways, you do not care what he says. He can tell you right off the bat, hey, I want you to do this. You're going to look at it and go, well, that's not a good way. Uh, that must have been, I must have ate something last night. That's not meatloaf from last night talking to me. Uh, that's not God. How many of you guys have ever felt the spirit of the Lord and, and denied it was him because you didn't like his ways? You know how many times I've done that? Man, I, praying for people, praying in public. Have you guys ever felt you should pray for someone when you're at the grocery store? What happens? Like, why are you telling me to do that, God? You know, I just want to get my groceries and get out of here. I don't want to do nothing else. And I've had the Lord tell me so many times, like, hey, pray for that person. I can feel the spirit. It's not this booming voice, Tom, do it. If that happened, I'd probably would think someone was playing a trick on me. I don't know what I'd do. I'd excuse it some other way. But I'll feel the spirit of the Lord lead me. Hey, you should pray for this person. And immediately I go, no, that's not right. I don't trust that I should pray for this person. Now, isn't that crazy? Because how many of you guys know praying for people is just a good thing to do in, in general, right? But even in those small areas, there's a trust issue. God, I don't want to trust that this is real. If you want to learn to trust God, I'm sorry, if you want to learn to hear his voice, you want to learn how to want to hear his voice, you and I need to stop and say, God, do I trust your ways more than I way, uh, my ways? Listen, man. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. No matter what the Lord says to you, if you don't trust him, it will fall on deaf ears. No matter what he says to you, if you want to be someone who hears God's voice, who wants to hear God's voice, first you've got to learn to trust. Number two, oh, wait a minute, I got more? I got more. Oh, yeah. Your willingness to hear from God is going to derive from the place of trusting God. 
All right? And it, oh, never mind. I don't got more. I said all this stuff. I lied to you. Look to your neighbor and say, ignore that part. Go ahead and tell them that right now. Yeah. Check this out. Elijah had already seen what was coming. He had already predicted that he was going to die. That's why he was running. But he trusted God enough to give him his ear. Say, God, whatever you have, I want. The next one is a, a, a place of desire. So number two, number one is you have to trust. Number two, you have to have a desire. And I'm going to say it this way, a desire beyond your own personal desires. That means you have to be someone who says, God, this is what I want, but I want what you want even more. I got three stories. I'm not going to read them to you. And these stories are crazy. But one of them is Saul. King Saul. Do you guys know this story? We read this a while back. King Saul. I love this story. He loses the spirit of God and he is desperate to hear God. In fact, his desire to hear God was so great that he went and got a medium and raised Samuel from the dead. That is a crazy desire. Now, I don't think any of you guys should go to a medium and try to raise someone from the dead. That's not what I'm preaching, okay? Do not do, look to your neighbor and say, don't raise people from the dead on your own, okay? Go ahead and tell them that, yeah, yeah. Have the Spirit of the Lord do it through you. And I believe the Lord could do it. But Saul had a desire so great, he went against his own law in the land that mediums should be put out. He said, no, no, I got a desire. Daniel, for 21 days, he prayed over his city that God would intervene and do something. 21 days of fasting. How many of you guys go one day without, how many of you guys go one meal without eating and you get mad? Anyone in this house? Yeah. How many of you guys skip a meal and you say, I guess I'm fasting. You guys ever done that one before? Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. It's like, I got you, God. I'm fasting today. For 21 days, Daniel desired the Lord's voice in intercession. And he did not eat. 21 days. Samuel. Israel wanted a king and it displeased him so much because God had made it really clear, I could be your king. And the the people say, no, we want a king. We want to be like all the other nations. And Samuel hears that and he hates it. He goes, you guys are idiots. Why would you want a king? We got God as our king. They say, no, do it. So he goes before the Lord and against all other desires of saying, no, we won't have a king. We'll keep serving the Lord. He listens to the father. God, what is it that you desire? I want to hear from you. My desire is that we never have a king, but what do you want to say? You know what the Lord says to him? Give them a king. You know what's crazy about these three stories? They got to the place of wanting to hear God's voice out of desperation. They got to a place of saying, I got to get to the place so deep that I I want to hear. Daniel was praying for 21 days, going, I want to hear you because there's a darkness over the city. I need you, God. The darkness is too great. I have a greater desire for you to come now. I need to hear you. Saul went against and sinned on his own because he's going, I got to hear the Lord. Samuel just sat and said, God, I hate what's going on. And even in my own ideas of what should be, I desire your ways, God. If you want to be someone who wants to hear the voice of God, you need to make it the most important desire of your life. God, I want to hear you, but my desire is this food right now. God, I want to hear you, but my desire is Instagram. How many of you guys love Instagram? Anyone in here? Yeah? Four of us? I don't believe you. Okay, Facebook? Maybe you guys are older. How many of you guys love Facebook? Yeah, some older people in here. What's up, guys? Okay. That's an age thing. I want you to know that. Listen, desire, desire is measured by time spent and work put into. That's how you know what you desire. How much time spent you put into it and how hard you work for it. When was the last time you spent time trying to hear the Lord's voice? When was the last time you worked for it? Uh, oh, there's this guy. You guys remember when iPhones used to come out and there'd be a line? You guys remember that? Or Black Fridays? You guys remember Black Fridays? Remember the golden days of Black Fridays? Those are crazy, right? People were beating each other up. Remember, you guys remember that? That was crazy. When was the last time you went to Black Friday? It's boring. It's just shopping at four in the morning now. But back in the day, it was a riot, right? And, and there's a story. The guy who waited the longest. I don't know if you guys know this. His name is Yoppy. He's a Japanese man. Yoppy. In the iPhone 6. You guys remember the iPhone 6? Yeah, a few of you guys? Where are my Android people at? <clears throat> yeah, okay. <laughs> this is what the Android people talk about. Us being cultish. Yoppy reported to wait in line for seven months to get the iPhone 6. It's a record. This is back in 2014. 
He started a lineup outside the Apple Store in Tokyo in January of 2014, long before the official announcement of the phone came out. That's crazy. The phone didn't come out until September of that same year. That is a man who had desire. I want to put in the work. I want to put in the effort. You know, I brought up Daniel 21 days of not eating. This guy was, I'm going to say stupid. Can I say stupid if you're watching? I'm sorry. But you're like, that's crazy. You know, that's crazy. Now, I, I want to say this. Uh, it, reportedly, it wasn't about the phone. He was actually doing it as a publicity stunt to get people to go do his blog. But it's still the same point. He had a desire to get people on his blog, so he was willing to put in the work and the time. He said, this is my desire. I'm going I'm to put everything towards this. This is more important than anything else in my life. We're talking about how do you become someone who wants to hear the voice of the Lord? And using the word desire is almost like, well, you're just saying the same thing over. But what I'm trying to point out is you have so many different desires in your life that are fighting for your attention. You have so many desires. There's so many different wants in your life. If you want to be someone who wants to hear the voice of the Lord, you've got to start neglecting your other desires. Wait a minute. I want to hear God's voice. So let me put away the ice cream at 10 p.m. That was me and my wife last night. We were literally trying not to eat ice cream at 10 p.m. Now, let me put away the iPhone. Let me put away the TV. Let me stop working on my work. Let me just get to the place like Yoppy for nine months or eight months. Let me just be someone who said, though, I got to make this the greatest of my desires. And you won't be able to do that until you decrease your desires in other areas. Oh, let me lower my ambition to be the greatest of them all. Let me hear the Lord. Let me lower being accepted in my culture. No, no, I want to hear the voice of the Lord. And number three, though, is my favorite point. And this one's a little bit tougher, so I want you to look at your neighbor and say, buckle up. I actually say what my kids say, buckle up, buttercup. Go ahead and say that. Yeah. <laughs> buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> You guys are saying that. It's, it's catchy. They got me on that, man. Number one, you have to trust the Lord. Number two, you got to get your desire up. In other words, put your other desires down. But number three, if you want to learn how to want the voice of the Lord, you'll never do it without first submission to the Father. This is the most important thing I could share with you today. But it's a heavier thing. Because there's this trick I've learned in Christianity that goes like this. I could submit to God partially, and I could hear God's voice partially, and that's enough validation for me to feel like I'm a good Christian. But the Lord wants total surrender. And he actually says this about partial surrender. He says, partial surrender is lukewarm. I don't like it. He says, if you only submit to me a little bit, but you don't give me everything, he says, this is lukewarm. I spit that out of my mouth. I don't like that. He says, I'd rather you be against me than be partially submitted. If you're going to be someone who learns the voice of the Lord and first become someone who wants to hear the voice of the Lord, you got to work on maybe the strongest stronghold you have in your life, which is to submit to the Father before submitting to yourself. And this is uh, crazy because submission disrupts your entire life. It kind of ruins everything. I'm going to use a story about my wife again. I just shared three fights with you guys today. Isn't that great? Yeah, we're healthy, I promise. We're a good, happy marriage, okay? But back in 2018, we weren't. In 2018, I, I had an emotional affair. And, and on the drive to my, my wife's grandma's house, the emotional affair is, is the, you know when you're pre-dating someone and it's all flirty? That's what an emotional affair is. It's the pre-dating stage with someone while you're married. I was doing that with this girl. And I, my wife, my, the Lord told me I was going to tell my wife because I, I was coming out of it. I'm thinking, what am I doing? And so I went to my wife. I didn't go to my wife. My wife came to me and said, hey, is this relationship appropriate? I said, no, it's not. And uh, all hell broke loose. And it was nuts in that car. Another car fight. <laughs> you know, we should get different cars. That would probably actually solve a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm trying to say really. And my wife was pretty mad because trust had been broken. And, and my desire for her had changed. And not really. I, I still love her. We're actually in, in a great time of our marriage. I was just flirting. I was being a jerk. And she was sitting there. She's going, I'm not, I can't forgive this guy. That's what she's saying. And she could feel the Lord tell her to come here in her heart, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't go to the Lord. How many of you guys ever like, feel the Spirit of the Lord and you know I'm not going to go to him because what he's about to say to me, I don't want to hear. You guys ever had that before? <laughs> Can I use my kids, for example? Uh, sometimes when people come over, you know, bedtime's at 8, and we get distracted and we forget about bedtime, right? 
Maybe you did this with your parents. And my kids will do this thing where all of a sudden they're the quietest people you've ever seen. <laughs> right? And they're like standing in the corner, they're in the shadows a little bit, you know, <laughs> eating snacks, you know. They really do this. It's true. Like they'll be like sitting behind us and we can't look at them, right? Because they know as soon as we address them, it's bedtime. They don't want to hear that. And so they're kind of avoiding. Well, my wife was, was in 2018 was kind of doing that same thing. Saying, no, I, I'm not, I'm not going to forgive him. I know if I go to you, Lord, you're going to ask me to do something. And I'm submitted to you. So if I don't hear you, then I don't have to submit. So one night after it's been a blowout, and I want to make this clear, rightfully so. She goes to the windowsill. She's doing dishes. And she just says to the Lord, fine. What do you want from me? She submitted. What is it that you want from me, God? You know what the Lord said to her? <laughs> all right, we'll give you some context. I got to do this fast. The night before, she almost murdered me, legitimately, all right? She, she had a break. She lifted up. She's like, oh, I can't kill him. That would be too much. So she really thought that. Yeah, <laughs> she really thought that. And, and so we were like, in the, so every time I came out of the room, right, to see her, I was like that. I had my tail between my legs. I like look at her like this. And so, and so she, that next morning when she's at the window still, and she submitted herself to the Lord, Against her own desires. Against what was justified. She said, okay, God, it's not what I think is better. I'm going to submit to you. What do you want? And the Lord said a bunch of stuff, but mainly, you're going to forgive him, and you're going to sit under him as a pastor, because I wasn't pastoring yet. She said, I'm never going to sit under you as a pastor. You won't be my pastor. And the Lord said, and you're going to sit up front. She had never sat up front. She's up front every week now. I just want you to know that. Yeah, seriously. And so she looked at me, and she winked at me. You know how confusing that was? She was in silence. <laughs> it was like psychological warfare. You know? Girl went crazy. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, last night was a break, and then she smiles and winks at me. I'm like, no, no. You know? <laughs> but let me tell you why that story is important. It wasn't until she submitted to the Father could she hear the Father. She avoided everything that she would hear from the, the Lord. She said, I don't want to hear from you. But it wasn't until she submitted. There's a scripture in Acts chapter 16. It's Paul. He says, man, he, he was going through the region of Galatia. And they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. They wanted to go to Asia. Paul writes in letters, I'm dying to go to Asia. But it says the Holy Spirit wouldn't let him. Now, that doesn't, that, that doesn't imply that the Spirit of God, like, force-filled him. And he couldn't go. No, he was saying, don't go. Don't go. And Paul was forbidden in submission. He says, I'm submitted to you. And after that, the Lord opened up and said, this is where I want you to go. And he sends him out to this other place, Malaysia or something like that. And he sends him out, but he was submitted. He said, God, I don't care what you say. Whatever it is, I'm going to do it. Submission. I read this book, man. It's called Hearing God. I'm going to land on this. This is my ending right here. And, and, and this, this, this is the reason why submission is the biggest part of hearing or wanting to hear God's voice. Becoming someone who desperately wants his voice first has to have submission. Is, 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 is that his word, when he speaks, it's disturbing. When God speaks to you, it's going to disturb your life. It disturbed my wife's life. She had plans. And if you're going to have someone speak to you and you want to hear it, you have to first say, I'm okay with you screwing me up right now. I got plans, but I'm okay with you taking over. And I read this book, Hearing God by Dallas Willard, and he's talking to Christians who have never heard from God. And this is what the writer writes, because there's, by the way, people in this room who go, I don't think I've ever heard from God. And this is what he writes, and bear with me. This is where you need your seatbelt. He says, you've never heard God's voice? You've never heard him communicate to you? God has never pointed a way altogether different than the one you plan to go? You're telling me that God has never pointed a different way than you have already planned? You do as you please day in and day out? Dells writes, then you are still in slavery Perhaps you don't want to hear it. Then again, maybe you don't expect it because you fully intend to run your lives on your own and never truly considered anything else. If he spoke to you, it would be an intrusion to your plan. 
I couldn't have said it any better. Because God's voice will always be a voice that calls you to surrender. He will never tell you to fulfill what your flesh is desiring. When he speaks the word of the Lord, if you want to be someone who wants to hear it, you have to recognize first that if he's going to call me, then I need to be submitted first. I need to get to the place of my heart saying, God, I bow down to you for real. I surrender. Here's my white flag. Do what you will with me. You see, so many of us are going, I want God's voice. We're saying that, but not really because we know that if he says something we disagree with, we fully intend not to go with it. And we do this thing where we hear his voice and we'll just push it to the side. And that wasn't God. God would never want me to suffer regardless of what the word says. God would never want me to be sad. God would never want me to not be just fulfilled. He's, come on, God. You're supposed to be my sugar daddy. You're supposed to be the one who gives me my heart's desires. You're supposed to be the one who doesn't let me get upset. You're not supposed to be the one who puts me through fire and tests me. You're the one who's supposed to test my patience and my kindness. You're not supposed to be the one who puts me in positions where I'm going to be pushed to my limit. And so his voice is speaking all around us all day, day in and day out. But we don't have submitted hearts. So he's calling us, come read your word. No, no, that's that's not God. That's just guilt. Hey, get up, go go to church. That's not the Lord. Call up your friend. Check on him. No, that's... And all of a sudden, even though with our lips as... Isaiah writes about the Israelites that you say with your lips that you want me and you desire me, but your backs are turned towards me. You're not submitted. You're not with me. No, you're stiff-necked and you won't move altogether the way that I lead you. The biggest thing you could do if you want to hear the voice of the Lord, no, no. The biggest thing you could do to become someone who wants to hear the voice of the Lord is to first say, God, I submit to you. I submit to you. Whatever you want, I submit to you. Even if it's my life. I, I, I see in the scriptures what you say, Father, to the disciples. Give up your stuff and follow me. And they did. They gave up their entire life. They, they died a miserable death, bold to death, skin to death, hung on a cross. I see everywhere in the scriptures that everyone who followed you, they gave up up everything. In fact, Lord, you said anyone who calls upon you as Lord, which means master, as in the one I am submitted to, the one who has authority, whatever you say, I will do. There is nothing in my life that's out of reach for you. In order to be someone who desires and wants his voice, you first got to be someone who trusts him, who pushes your other desires away and submits to him. I'm yours. You know what happens when that happens? You go to your prayer room like Joshua did when he lost a war. He gets before him and he will stay there all night because his desire is so great he'll put time and effort into it. He'll stay there until evening crying out to the Lord, I need to hear your voice. What am I supposed to do? You'll go like Daniel on his face, 21 days. God, I got to have you. I trust your ways. Your ways above everybody else's. I need you. You'll you'll become like all the greats in the Bible, even the disciples where they're having a hard time going, man, I don't know what the Lord does. Let's just sit and wait. I trust his ways. And whatever he says, I will do. And every one of those stories, they heard the voice of the Lord. Every one of those stories, they heard his voice. In order to learn how to hear his voice, you got to start with wanting to hear his voice. And you won't want it until you trust him. Until you make it the greatest of your desires. And three, you submit to him. Can we stand to our feet? Can you close your eyes? I just want to pray over us in this house. I believe it's always important to bring a time of response to the sermon. If you're in this house today, and maybe you've been guilty of what I've been guilty of, over and over. I feel like daily I have to die to myself on this issue. But if you're in this house and you're going, man, I, I want to hear the voice of the Lord. 
But I recognize I, I need to trust myself a little bit less and trust him a little bit more. Or maybe you're in this house today and you have been the person who's let the desires of everything else in this world take your time and your efforts. And you haven't put to the side time and effort before the Lord. You're going, man, I need to start doing that. I need to become someone who really wants it. Or maybe, maybe you're in this house and there are some lines that you draw on with the Father. He said, God, you know, if you want me to pray for someone in the grocery store, fine, but you're not going to talk to me about my finances. You're not going to talk to me about my attitude. You're not going to talk to me about how injustice that was and what I'm supposed to do. And maybe you drew some lines and you don't have full submission to the Father. And today, you're going, Pastor Tommy, I want you to pray over me that I would be that person. That I would be the person who trusts the Father. I will be the person who puts all my other desires down. And I'm the person who's fully submitted in this house. I want you to put your hand up real high. I want to pray over you. Come on. Come on. That's, that's like everybody. Come on. Father, I pray right now, me included, Jesus, that we would be people who don't just say we want to hear your voice, but, Father, people who say, I trust Yahweh above all others. I trust the Father above my own ways. I trust that he will not fail me. Father, I pray over everyone in this house, Jesus. That the desires of the world would cease to exist. That they would grow dim as we set our eyes upon you, Holy One. And that, God, the desire, the work, the effort, the time would be towards your presence. That we would change what we want, God, to be the thing that we need the most, your voice. And, God, most importantly, over all of our hands that are up right now, God, oh, Father, we got lines that we're drawn. We said, Father, we got this. We will take care of this. You take care of these other parts we don't have the strength for. But God, you, you didn't say I came for the weak parts. You said I came for all of you. And Father, I pray that today, every hand that's raised, God, we come to the place of the greatest submission we've ever been in. But we said, God, whatever you say, we will do. Father, you want me to give it all up like the rich young ruler? Fine. You want me to leave my father's business, Father, like you did Peter? Fine. You want me to leave the tax collecting like you did Matthew? Fine, God. Whatever it takes. You want me to be the one who leaves the muck and mire like the Israelites? Fine. You want me to get out of the threshing floor like Gideon? Fine. I trust you. I want you. And I'm submitted to you today. So Father, I pray over these hands that we'd be people who are submitted. That God, when we go home today, we'd say, whatever you want, God, I'm yours. That when we walk through the grocery store, we'd say, God, is there anything you desire? I am yours. Be our Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, keep your eyes closed for just a second longer.